Daniel for years. We've asked you about Daniel for years. What did you think about his performance getting 11 carries in that opener? Daniel played really well. All of them played well. Uh, you asked for, uh, specifically about Daniel. He played well. Uh, he did everything we asked him to do. There's obviously some things he can improve on, but, uh, you know, the room had 82 yards in yaks. Daniel probably had the most. I didn't do them individual. I just did them collectively, but huh, they all play well. What did Daniel do to earn a start? Daniel is uh, very consistent. Uh, he's here every day. He's a good leader. He's the smartest guy in the room. And, uh, you know, it's a collective body of work. Now, as we go, we'll, we'll evaluate it every week. And today, if I had to evaluate it on today, who, who, all, who knows? They all play fantastic today. So, you know, they all got about 22, 23 reps, somewhere in there. And <clears throat> I can't say it's going to always be that way. It's, it's going to be some game where one guy gets hot, he'll get a little bit more. The good news is we've got three guys that can all play winning football. So we should never be worn out. We should always have a fresh guy in the game. And we've got two young guys that can get in the game and, and give us a give us a blow too at times. Daniel yep. told us about how he lost weight coming into this season mm -hmm. and he wanted to be faster. Was that mm -hmm. part of the plan that you, that, that you that you were the coaches had, or <laughs> no. was that just something he did? On that his was own? Daniel's plan. I think Daniel wanted a six pack. I think that was the whole thing. <laughs> but uh, he did lose weight. And I saw him lose weight, and I kept saying, "Boy, I mean, he lost like 20 pounds because he was in the 40s and now he's in the 20s." Um, but what we do with him at 20, you know, in the 20s, he can do what we ask him to do. And um, he is moving better. What was, the what was your analysis of how the punt team looked on Saturday? Well, <laughs> we had two punts, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, the first one, we were a little disappointed. Had a chance to get them pinned inside the five-yard line. <clears throat> and we failed to come up with the ball. And uh, so, you know, we go and and show them tape of guys in the past like Trey Tipton. Trey Tipton had a knack for it. Um, you know, we just had two young guys, first time playing here at Pitt on punt team, and they just got to they gotta, they gotta capture the ball. Is, uh, it, is it almost fortunate that those mistakes are coming in a game, you know, where you were winning by a lot? You weren't yeah, winning by a lot at that yeah. time, but it's good you to know. get those mistakes out of the way in week one against yeah, Wofford. You, you, know, you, don't, you don't ever want it to happen, but you'd rather happen against Wofford than in the ACC championship game. Yeah. The other punt was uh, was a good punt. It was a it was a it was a touch. It was a fair catch. It was a forty, some odd punt with good hang time. So we were pleased with that. We got yeah. to see Phil quite a bit outside of the pocket. How much do you emphasize to your running backs about play extension and maybe finding a hot round and getting open for Phil and in, in those secondary type of plays? All the time. I mean, every pass we have, you know, everyone is designed to be somewhere. So. I'm, all, I'm always on my guys about being exactly where you're supposed to be, being available for the quarterback if he's looking for you. So every play, every pass play. You guys lined up Montrevious Lloyd in a lot of different ways. How did you grade his performance? He was okay. He was okay. That's I mean, he was, uh, you know, he was, he was wide on a few things, and he was just a little tentative, and he made a good catch. And I'm glad he was available because he tweaked his hamstring early in the week. But he's young. It was good for him to get in, you know, keep giving him a little bit of work. Who knows? You get a couple of guys nicked up and, you know, game seven, he may he may get a big, big chunk of uh, plays. What do you like about Rodney's vision, especially on inside zone runs, the way he processes, especially mm. when it's like things are getting punched up? Well, Rodney has good vision. I think part of that is understanding the line block. And I think a lot of that is eye discipline. And when when you have eye discipline and you know what you're supposed to look at and what the where the line is going, it makes it look like your vision is fantastic. And Rodney's one of those guys who has all those things. How is Derek Davis progressing? It's just progressing well. It's progressing well. I mean, he made a few mistakes in the game, you know, processing a few things, uh, had a drop. Um, you know, he's got good hands. He tried to body catch the ball, catch it with your hands, and so he hadn't played much tailback mm -hmm. since high school. So. Mm -hmm. No one's disappointed with them, but just got to keep them going. You guys, I mean, you got a lot in the passing game out of the running backs. Caught, caught a number of passes, got some plays. You, you like how that's coming along? You feel like that can be a, a real weapon for the offense this year? Yeah, just, you know, take what the gif defense gives you. Don't force balls. You know, last year against the Louisville, we forced several balls and turned them over when we had guys underneath wide open. So when you're where you're supposed to be, uh, and you take what the defense gives you, then there's a lot. There's a lot of crumbs you can pick up there. Andre, obviously, when Cincinnati scores 66, there's a lot of attention offensively. What about defensively? What, what 
kind of challenge Ooh. they face. <laughs> well, they're big. And they got a two, 320 pound nose guard and big outside linebackers. They're big and they're physical. Um, and they're fast. Other than that, it's no problem. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, they play a similar defense to the one we just played. Um, you know, so we just got to do a good job uh, staying on blocks, making cracks, getting in them, taking what the defense gives us, and not turning the ball over. And we'll see what happens at the end of the game. I saw AJ got the starting nod at kickoff returner for this week. Uh, what did you like out of him against Wofford? He caught the ball. <laughs> did not make a good decision taking the ball out. Um, so we got to we got to work on that. I mean, in total, I mean, do you expect to see your guys get even 12 kickoff returns this year? Or do you just think it's going to be just touchback, touchback, touchback? Well, we got 20, 20 last year, mm -hmm. 20, low 20s. So you do a lot of work to get ready for those 20s. But um, the thing is, those, you know, you, you crack a long one. Remember back to ACC Champions year, we hit that long one against Virginia. Mm -hmm. That count, them seven points count too, you know. And, you know, you do a lot of work if you get a good kick. You know, you can you can hit a crack, you can make something happen. Um, but worst worst comes to worst, to kick it in the end zone. Let's take it on the 25 and give the defense give give the offense, you know, solid field position. I was noticing Saul's kickoffs. He's almost getting out of the end zone. Is he capable? Yeah. Of doing that? Huh? Is he capable of getting it out of the end zone? It's again like and eight kicking, yards deep. He can kick it a long ways. Yeah. Kick it a long ways. So. Is he the strongest leg has, you've had since you've been here? Since I've been here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's strong. I mean, he's a little guy, but he's strong. Yeah. I think Pat said yesterday that with Bob on the kickoff returns, he was kind of like, uh, why do we have our lead receiver out there? Did he come into your office and say, hey, what are we doing here? We need to change this up. No, up. Coach doesn't have to tell me stuff like that. I mean, I understand that. I'm old enough to know that if we don't lead the nation in kickoff return, that's okay. You know, we just can't, we can't louse it up. Just like on kickoff coverage, we've got a good guys on kickoff coverage, but just as soon as I can get them out of the game, I'm getting them out of the game. Um, so I'm not one of those guys that it's not about me, it's about the team. So I'm always fair. I'm always subbing guys if they need subbed. And, you know, what the thing we don't want to do is we want, we want to help win, but we don't, we don't want to louse it up. We can't, we can't put anybody in the game where we take a chance on, you know, special teams being a minus. Uh, but, we, you know, we just have to be smart with what we do. You talk about substitutions. I'm, I'm curious about the running backs, and I think we've talked about this different points over the years. Is, is that your call on the sideline? You're, you're watching, you're saying, all right, Rodney, I need you on this series, Derek, or yeah. whoever. Yeah, we got a rotation we set before the game. And I don't even look. Sometimes I look up and go, aren't you supposed to be in? And they go, well, he's hot. Just let him go. So, you know, I got a good room. Not, not, no jealousy, you know. So the, 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 the rotation is set before the game. Is that a common thing? I mean, you've coached a while now. Have, have you been a part of other programs where guys will say, "Hey, he's got the hot hand. Let him keep going." When you, yeah, when you got you know when you got guys, yeah. when you got you know it was the same with Allison and Hall. Um, you know, uh, when you got James Conner and you got those younger guys, it wasn't that way. But you know, if you got Spiller and Davis, let them go, and then you get Ellington and Harper. You, just, who, you ask them who started this week. Um, because they, they all practice everything. And we're not in a situation where we have a third down back um, per se. So, yeah, unless, unless, you know, again, someone gets hot, let, let them go. When you do that, sit, uh, that before the game rotation, set the, pro, set the rotation before the game, is it situationally? I mean, yeah, it, some situations involved in it, mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of situations would fit? Certain? Well, you know, if it's a two, two-minute drive to win the game, mm -hmm. you know, you may, you may have a special guy. If it's... Uh, you know, if it's um, certain plays, I mean, my guys run all the plays, but it's certain plays that if I know we're going to call, we want certain guys in the game that they they specialize in that play. Mm -hmm. um, but the rotation is pretty much the rotation. You stick to it. Well, you know how you don't have to always stick to it. I mean, if it's going according to plan, you stick to it. But mm -hmm. you know, always change it mid-game. 